This is the most insane jump you'll ever see in Days Gone. I'm talking about sliding off a roof, landing on top of a crane cab, and if I miss, it's game over, because there's a 500 freaker horde waiting to tear me apart. Before I even attempt this crazy stunt, I'll need to loot three locations, scavenging for every throwable and resource I can find. This is one of the craziest challenges I've attempted in Days Gone, and I'm about to show you how to pull it off. Wherever you are, welcome in. I'm Great Ghost Gamers, and this video is going to show off the defeat of the Sawmill Horde from no doubt the craziest untouchable spot ever. Now, the big twist in the gameplay you're about to watch from me is that I'm going to have to do this twice. With the Horde at 500, my ammo and throwables that I currently have won't be enough to wipe them out in one go. So the big question is, can I repeat the jump and finish them off? In order to answer that, I gotta start at the beginning. So if you're ready for the ride, here we go. The setup for this Sawmill Horde attack is based on my getting three powerful endgame weapons from Wizard Island early. In fact, I left straight from the Cascades and am now making my way into Lost Lake for the first time. I can't rely on only getting ammo from out in the open tins or tins from police cars as they don't respawn. I need a reliable way to refill my ammo. And to do that, I'm going to open two Nero MMUs. One at Santium Tunnel, where I entered the region, and more practically, the one at Sawmill. The Santium Tunnel Nero checkpoint is one of only a few access points where you can come off the mountain range and into Lost Lake. Not only is it the first logical stop, but really the only truly practical one in order to attack the Sawmill Horde with my current loadout and resources. So I picked up these amazing weapons. The Metal Axe, the Lil Stubby, the RPD, and the PPSH-41. And because I bought them, I have them in the locker. Of course, my yes. first immediate problem is the fact that I have no money in this region, which is why one of the big reasons to open up this MMU is to be able to get cash at Iron Mike's, which this does. I'm not really too concerned about the points, the trust points, because I need money in order to buy the ammo to refill the weapons. It might seem a little confusing, especially for the fact that as I open the locker, I have the weapon available and I have the ability to fill it from Iron Mike's, who doesn't have a weapons merchant, which is what? <laughs> anyway, it's a welcome game mechanic because otherwise you'd be roaming the countryside trying to find ammo in open tins and houses and running around to cop cars, not even knowing how much ammo you're really gonna get. So it's just a really long drawn out process. Now what I'm doing though is I'm swapping out my RPD for the crossbow. And there's a very important reason for that, which I'm gonna show you after we change night to day. So I think I got a med kit there that I can pick up, yeah. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna craft some Molotovs so that whatever resources I do have, I can pick up at least more materials to craft more items. Now, oddly enough, I can hear Freakers out there, but it's still going to let me sleep. I don't know why that happens sometimes, where it says you have to clear the enemies before you sleep. And at this point, they were just right outside the door. But we're still able to sleep and advance the cycle. All right. That's the way the game wants to be. Let it be. So we've got our cash. 
Time to get out of here. Arguably, having an MMU to be able to refill your ammo at is ideal, considering that, again, Iron Mike's is there, but the merchant isn't, but they're able to give me ammo? I don't know. Maybe they've got, like, same-day service. <laughs> Regardless, what we really want to do in order to make this attack on the sawmill horde really work is opening up the sawmill MMU. Right? That makes the most sense. That way we don't need to come back here to rearm. Oh. We're out of patrol. Shit. Ouch. Okay. Ah, the joys of survival too. Everything just hurts more. Now, it's really early in the morning, so I'm wondering if the horde is going to be sleeping or eating. <laughs> Not that I'm going to get close enough to verify that. In fact, I think what I'm just going to do is uh, try and see from over here. Can't see them sleeping. But regardless, in order to open up the MMU, we gotta take out these speakers. And in order to do that, I wanna be as silent as possible, which is why I picked the crossbow. I don't necessarily wanna waste ammo or suppressors for this job. And I really don't wanna climb up on all of them. Oh. There they are. They're not sleeping over there as I thought, but in fact, they were having a chow down. Breakfast special. So now they are heading off to sleep, which is good. Yeah, <laughs> a lot easier than going through the animation of walking over, then cutting it, and blah, blah, blah. It's much faster. And I'm only wasting bolts, not ammo. Believe me, I won't have much use for this weapon after I've uh, done this particular job. Here of taking out the speakers. Yeah, here we go. Because I don't have anything for the crossbow. I don't have any special bolts. No explosive bolts, no nothing. Green lights are good and no speakers blaring out to get the horde all riled up and on their way over here, right. so that's even a better bonus. Here we go. Yes, narrow injector. Yeah, I like stamina more than anything. Because <laughs> in my gameplays, I tend to do a lot of running. But look at that, another 1900 bucks. Through chemistry. That should be more than enough cash to refill the weapons as many times as I need to in order to take down this horde. Yeah, let's just craft everything we can to give us more room in our satchel to pack away stuff we can pick up in the world. As mentioned before, I don't have carry that weight, nor do I have a lot of items or inventory 
in this particular playthrough since I just got to Lost Lake early and have not progressed through the main story to be able to build up the arsenal or get the extra bonuses or get the skill carry that weight to be able to pack away double the amount of resources to be able to craft stuff with or have double the amount of room to be able to have the weapons and inventory to lob at these guys. But having opened up this MMU is really going to save on having to travel all the way back to the Sentium Tunnel 1. All right. I think I've looted the MMU for as much as I can carry for what uh, the game will allow me to have at this point. But not too far. At a small lake. are some very valuable items that I'm going to be able to use right there. Proximity mine, a tractor bomb, and frag grenade. Right, right there, those two will help immensely. As I mentioned, there's a tin out there. Yeah. So though that a tractor bomb, that'll be good. And I'm going to have to, yeah, go back to the MMU to swap out my crossbow for the RPD before I attack the horde. But it's on to another loot location. So that was loot location number one. There might be some stuff in that building right there. Time to check it out. Oh, bottles? I can carry more bottles than kerosene. And it looks like I've reached a limit on that. So for the Molotovs, yeah. Ten bottles, ten rags, five kerosene. All right. Good to know that I can come back here after that supply that I'm carrying runs out. No, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Gotta go around. Now I'm just gonna make another pit stop in the tunnel. So as you can see, there are quite a few areas in and around the sawmill that have Resources in good supply. Yeah, I can't carry anything. Yeah. Well, get that can. It's for the smoke bombs. I missed something, but I'll come back to it if I need it. But next stop is Sherman's camp. There's another sweet cache of goodness. Two of them, actually. Two caches. It's nice to get the weapons, but man, I really wish I could get an upgrade for the speed of this bike. I'm not kidding when I'm telling you I'm flooring it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just uh, taking forever. Okay. That sounds pretty quiet. Normally, you encounter some activity in the way of marauders shooting up the place. But that's okay, because on the roof of that Habaneros building... <laughs> is 
is a nice cache. And if you don't happen to have weapons, you can pick up an SAF as well. But there we go, two smoke bombs. And now one more stop. I'll need to keep an eye on that gas can. Wow, it's really quiet. Lucked out. Scrap. Yeah, that's not what we're here for. We are here for this. Those two items right there. Two more attractor bombs and flashbang. So that maxes out our tractor bombs, but that will help. It will pare down the horde fairly nicely. One of the best things to happen with these locations as well is that unlike the tins out in the world or in the cop cars, There's another nest. these particular items up. will respawn in these locations. It's not going to help with this particular horde attack because it's not entirely necessary to worry about getting those items to respawn. I'll probably have enough Molotovs and be able to reload the ammo enough to be able to take out the rest of this horde. But it's good to keep in mind. That should be it. Okay, I'm just gonna speed things along and get us back to the sawmill. There we go, there's the locker. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Iron Mike's delivers. <laughs> Can't go to Iron Mike's and be able to do that, but they'll supply the MMU, so great service. Now, even though technically the guns were filled with ammo, the magazines aren't always loaded 100%, which is why I do that. I swap out the magazines and then go back into the locker and then fill them up one more time. I think that poor freaker is having a seizure or something. She coming after me. Well, she's not gonna find me. I'm tempted to take care of them, but I wanna get to the sawmill and not worry about these guys. They potentially could be a problem if there are roaming freakers near you to alert the horde. That could be a problem. Okay, here we are. Now, anticipating the situation where I will run out and will need to make my way back to the MMU, I'm just setting up my bike for a getaway. Because I'm going to need to be able to get out of here in a hurry regardless of the fact that I'll be taking out quite a few freakers and right now they're in their sleep mode but this is it folks this is my target I'm gonna be trying to get onto the cab the top there of this crane and I gotta do that by sliding off the roof of that building yeah it ain't easy. Full disclosure, the best thing to do is to make a save when you're at the bike. Because unlike some other attempts, most of them fail. <laughs> but here it is. So you line yourself up to the corner 
and just slide before you reach the end of that corner. If you coordinate it well enough, you will make it. But it's a very, very narrow point of entry. Like, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, you will, you will just fall off. And I've had Deke smash his head <laughs> on the side of this thing and pretty much die. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happens so once you've actually made it off the slide and onto the thing you're in midair and completely 100 percent thousand million percent untouchable there's nothing in this game that can get to you so Let's get this party started and come to the realization that I do not have unlimited ammo, do not have a ton of grenades and throwables that I can pitch their way, which means I will be coming down and having to do this again. Ah, damn, I think I threw it too early. Ah, uh, was that worth only about eight of them? Oh well. But look at this. I mean, this is crazy. This is nuts. All right, I'm gonna switch. Switching, <laughs> switching to guns. I'm out of missiles. <laughs> Top Gun reference for those. This particular gun actually is not great long range. Of course, if you're a better aim than mine, you'll probably kill a lot more of them. And there isn't a lot of ammo for this weapon. So this will, this will be the first gun that's going to run out of ammo on me. That's, that's done. But look at the path. You can, I mean, you also can see the path that they take. Which is a really good to keep note of. Because then you know exactly where to hit them. And if you do have an ample number of supplies where you don't have to worry about uh, rearming, you can just go to town on these guys. But by all means, make a game save before you make the attempt. Sliding off that roof and hitting the edge of the roof of the cab. I gotta tell ya. I must have died at least half a dozen times. Easily. If you have the dexterity with the joystick or the keyboard to be able to time that slide and angle yourself on that jump, it's a little bit easier. Now the good thing is too is you can manipulate the horde a little bit by coming back down closer to the edge of the safety zone, I will, because you're not actually on anything. <laughs> you're not on the roof of the cab. You're hovering quite a bit off of it. But horde manipulation is definitely available to you. Yeah, skill point. That's not going to help me at this point. The good thing is, is that the Molotovs are at least one of those resources that you can find a lot of abundance in and around the area. As you saw, 
when we were doing our first scavenge run. There were still leftover cans of kerosene and a few bottles lying around. So crafting the Molotovs is relatively accessible if you're in this situation. Grenades and the other throwables, not so much. Just get them all piled up around nicely. Now knowing you can manipulate the horde this way could give you some ideas when it comes to remote bombs. That might be another particular strategy you could use because you can see how they pile around the front and the side there. So plenty of options in terms of how you can formulate your strategy to attack this horde. Yeah, I'm running out of stuff now. <laughs> Time to use the big one. Okay, save, saved it for this. So the one grenade, the one attractor. I'll take out a nice chunk. Yeah, let's go for the Molotovs. Keep going. So I'm, I'm out of the. I'm out of ammo. So now it's throwables. And get the horde back over here. Come on over, guys. Yeah, yeah. You also want to be sure not to throw the Molotovs in quick succession, one after the other because you'll kind of defeat the purpose of their effectiveness. So just throw the Molotov. Throw it where they're not burning if you want to throw multiples like there. But let the Molotov do its job. And I'm out. And no more kerosene. Well, I got the little stubby, so I might take a few out in short range. Let's see. Yeah, there's, there's still quite a few. All right. That's pretty much... Yeah, well, proximity mine. I might be able to use that. But here's where the smoke bomb will come in handy in order to make our escape. Because I got I to gotta go back now. I got to refill. Got to refill the ammo. So let's... Manipulate the horde into running away by climbing back a little higher there. I don't think all of them will go, so we're just gonna have to take our chances on this one. But the smoke bomb should delay them enough to get to the bike. All right. Out of here. Okay. And I don't think I'm being followed at this point. Nope. Now once again, because we're attacking the horde out of order, and <laughs> being in Lost Lake this early is about as out of order as it gets, there's no real way of knowing how much of the horde we've taken out. But from the looks of uh, the freakers that were left over, that, that was pretty sizable. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> I love running into those guys. It's so much fun. But yeah, we took out, I think we took out quite a huge chunk. Now the sun's getting low, four o'clock. I am thinking attacking them at night is not going to be favorable. But we can stock up on a few things. So there you go. There's some kerosene. Yep. Oh, need some more, Deke. Come on. You know where there's more. need a band-aid well yeah might as well took a little damage coming off the cranes 
but no damage from freakers, obviously. And even the explosions and whatnot, all the things I threw down there, unlikely to affect Deke at that height. There's some other easy kill spots where you have to crouch in order to not feel the effects of the explosive devices that you're using. But from up there, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous, right? I will have a little bit of a hot take on it, though. It's not a position that I would probably do more than showing you in this video. It just, it's, it's a bear to get up there. I, I do not have the dexterity with the controls to make it consistently without having to either reload the game from the save point of uh, making it at the bike or just dying because Deke smashes his head on the side of the car of the of the crane <laughs> or on a barrel as he's falling down or whatnot so yeah I think uh, there are there are uh, many other locations at at this sawmill where you can achieve the similar result without uh, the aggravation of trying to make it to the spot I mean I, I admit it's kind of intriguing, it's fun, uh, but if I were to do this on a regular basis, I, I doubt I would do that. Certainly it's a lot easier when you can make the, the, the attempt and only have to do it once. You're armed to the teeth, you have, you know, the napalm molotovs, you have the extended magazines, you're not going to run out of ammo. Yeah, I, I would I would not hesitate to attempt to do it. I wouldn't do it for a speed run, that's for sure. Because <laughs> I'll be there half the the speed run would be dead. If I if I incorporated this technique into speed run, forget it. <laughs> It'll take forever. All right. Now I really think. I'm going to hit the hay on this. Yeah, I've scavenged. Let the sun go down a little bit more. Scavenged enough. I'm I believe once I also rearm the mag put put fresh magazines in there and uh reload all the ammo for the guns. This sh this should do it. Ah, nice nice couple of bottles in here. So hopefully you're realizing too that it's doable even without all the fancy hardware or the doubled up inventory of throwables or even the napalms. It's it, This is a doable horde to eliminate. It just takes a little longer. All right. Clear out the magazines and let's fill her up. Good to go. Oh, one more kerosene. I'll take that. No, nope, no. Nope. Open the door. Get, get, get that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm going to scooch on ahead and turn our nighttime into day. So see you on the other side. Sleep loser says... I hear a bunk calling my name. Okay, so drove back to the escape site, made a quick save. More bounties. Died about eight times this time. <laughs> but uh, I'm using that location. Hopefully I'll kill more freakers, maybe. Maybe they bunch up. But here we go. So right there, again, I got to tell you, it is such a fine, narrow jump point that, uh, yeah, I don't think I'd be doing this more than once. <laughs> but now it's time to finish off these guys. Right? Time, time to put them to bed and take care of the, uh, take care of this horde. Get 
Yeah, no, I, know, I realize it, folks. I'm not going to hit anything, not even the broad side of that barn, pun intended, uh, with the weapon. It's just a noisemaker. But boy, it is fantastic for close quarter combat. I mean, forget the 9mm, right? Like, you've seen me handle the 9mm. I'm awful. But this little stubby, it's as good as Boozer's shotgun. No doubt about it. I can see, well, the bomb went off, but I don't think I killed anybody. <laughs> Must have killed at least maybe one. Oh, that was a complete waste. <laughs> so much for that proximity mine. Honestly, I, I really would say in this kind of combat, the remote bombs would be a much better solution, uh, especially knowing the path that they take. Oh my God, what's wrong with that freaker? <laughs> He's helicoptering. He's trying to get out. <laughs> it's <laughs> synchronized swimming. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, that that was that was funny. All right. Time to horn manipulate these guys to come back and group over here. I've got uh, got a few throwables I can I can throw their way. Come on, come on. Yeah, you don't need to crouch. I don't need to crouch. That's interesting that uh, there's still a bunch of them running up there. They're not all down here. Huh? Can I make a few more? Why not? Yeah. That's all we got. These last three, but... Oh yeah, I know, I know a few people who would just jump off now and just go for it with the guns, but... Why? <laughs> the whole point was to show you what you can do from up here, right? And how incredibly safe this position is. There's just no way anything can get up here. Oh my god. Like even them jumping off. <laughs> they're just they're not gonna make it. They're not gonna make it up to you. Alright, let's just not enough of them for me to warrant throwing it, so I'm just gonna start to... There we go. They do bunch up nicely right there. Now when you're fighting the Freakers from a horde, they usually, like I'm playing on Survival 2, and two shots pretty much take them out. If you come across a Freaker in the mix, and it's taken a little longer, they're the free roamers. They're the ones that uh, heard the siren call of all these guys screaming their mouths off, and uh, wandered over here to be part of the horde from outside. Which I think that other group was. Okay. Come on. Let's get the party together one more time. Still a couple coming from somewhere. I don't I don't know where they're coming from, but one more? What do you think? That's it. Yeah, they're close enough now. <laughs> oh, it's so great. I mean, look at the spread too of the of the weapon. So you can, if you can get two freakers in that zone, you can actually take two of them out. 
All right, now it's just clean up. Yeah, they're mostly done now. No, no, I don't have any more. I don't know, I want to throw, I just keep wanting to throw a ton of stuff at them. But let's get them, uh, let's get, get them in a spot where I can, yeah. This will finish off most of them, and then there won't be too many left. I mean, it's, they're lining up for you, coming right at you, why not? But we're done now. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Let's get out the little noisemaker. <laughs> and the music cue also will tell you that you're on the end, end of it. End of this. End of the story. This is it. Bye-bye. Wonderful. Wasn't that awesome? Uh, like I said, I wouldn't do this more than once. <laughs> if you wanted me to make this video, this is the only one about this method you're gonna see. That was fun though. I admit, that was fun. That was fun to take care of all those guys. But uh, yeah, that, that jump. I think I'll leave it uh, for people with more dexterity and aim than me. But if you really want to see an amazing way to take out this horde, I gotta point you to the video that I'm about to show right here. Head on over there, take a look at it. It's an awesome way to be at the Nero checkpoint and take out this horde. Be good to yourself and those you meet out there. See you next time.